I had not thought much about the mermaid at all. It has just not been part of my world as far as women's spirituality is concerned. So this was a great opportunity for me to do some exploration. And one of the things that I'm passionate about is I love studying ancient women's history. I love studying women's archetypes and, and goddesses and goddess history. So this was a very cool deep dive, pardon the pun, into mermaids. <laughs> So what I did is I have a, I'm, I, this is a two-part presentation. The first part is going to be my um, uh, exploration and my interpretation of the, uh, the mermaid archetype and her qualities. And then the second part is I have a little slide presentation of some of the amazing mermaid uh, 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 figures throughout history because mermaids have not, aren't just a current day uh, character. It is a divine presence that has been worshipped since um, for thousands of years. So first, I'd love to start with just some uh, an overview of this uh, this incredible mystical creature, um, because each of us has a mermaid inside of us, whether we know it or not. So uh, let me just go through some of the, the highlights. So mermaids are connectors between the worlds. They're both human and otherworldly, <clears throat> and they're magical and mystical in their very nature. And there were cultures, as I mentioned, way back as far as 8,000 years ago that started to worship goddesses and gods uh, of half female and half fish form. Um, the mer mermaid goddesses were considered to have uh, powers of creativity and fertility. And the mermen were considered teachers. They would come out of the ocean to teach the arts of the humanities. So um, they were a gift to the planet. They helped to create humanity. Mermaids also brought, they were also the divine force that brought moisture to the earth and the crops. So, you know, water yielded, um, sustenance for the for the tribes for the civilizations and fish came from these waters so she was revered for her powers to create the uh, sustenance mermaids were also considered protectors and she protected um, the fishermen and the sailors and she did answer to the calls of anyone who was in distress and in some tales mermaids assisted of the per the soul on their journey to other worlds so she was divine she was considered divine. Another aspect of the mermaid is that they're watery and flowy. So water is associated with the feminine and, um, and ancient cultures believe that bodies of water held feminine uh, divine energy. So, so just uh, the fact that water itself is feminine, that we have this beautiful creature who is also uh, known as, uh, as considered uh, feminine and flowy. So her feminine energy is fluid. The um, mermaid's energy is fluid. It flows. It's less linear and less logical than masculine. The mermaid's um, uh, energy rises and falls with the tides, with the moon. You know, the oceans, the waters all uh, respond to the phases of the moon, as do women. And water can be stormy, it can be calm. And so just like women, we have our many moods, our many uh, ways of being. Um, also water is considered active. Women are act the active energy and, and uh, versus the static energy of the masculine. So the feminine energy is considered to bring life to the masculine energy. So mermaids are actually life. Um, mermaids, another aspect of the mermaid is that they're sexual creatures. Just, they just are. Their beauty and their charm mesmerizes, mesmerize men, women, and children. They don't try to subdue their sexuality. They don't try to make it any better or bigger. They are just what they are. They, um, they have natural gifts of allure. They have their beautiful, sexy form. They're shaped in a, in, a, in a curvy fashion that is just beautiful to look at. And the way they move through the water with their tails propelling them through the water 
it's just sexy and feminine. Also, their um, voices are, part, are a part of their beauty. They speak in, in uh, voices that are soothing or alluring. And then also some of the uh, mermaid characters uh, are known or considered, um, uh, they, they sing and they play music and their music is so enchanting, it's considered angelic. Mermaids are also beautiful. Again, they just, they don't try to embellish their beauty. They just are, they accept that as what they are. They, um, they don't fret over their looks or their shape. They accept their, their form, uh, who they are and what they can do in the, in the uh, ocean and on the planet. Mermaids are sovereign. One thing that I've noticed in a lot of the folk tales and the folklore and the descriptions of the goddesses that I have studied is you don't often find mermaids that are paired up with a, a partner. Occasionally you do, but mostly these mermaids are sovereign. They rule their own bodies, they rule their own worlds, and um, they rule their own lives. And when the rules are broken, uh, when they do interact with humans or uh, other creatures, if the rules are broken, the perpetrator is often punished. So they're strong, they hold their ground or they hold their water, pardon the pun. So, um, and also if you do hear about uh, mermaids who are with a partner, often she operates as her own being. She's, she, uh, is, has her own power she or she and she is equal or she is equal with her partner they are partners in creativity and uh and in some instances the marriage between uh mer the mermaid and a partner symbolizes the mer the marriage between heaven and earth mermaids are loving so they're mystical and divine beings that are filled with love. They're, uh, they serve to assist humans. They love humans. They want to be like humans. In some stories, uh, mermaids actually sell their souls to become human. They, uh, they also want to help humans as they travel into the other realms uh, after they have left this earthly realm. And finally, mermaids are shapeshifters. In many tales, uh, mermaids will go from a fish to a human, to part fish to part human, to birds. The sirens are, they take the shape of a bird. And, uh, and then, and like women, they trans, we transform, we can shapeshift. Women are shapeshifters. We shapeshift through our entire lives as we go from uh, maiden, as we go into motherhood, as we go into the queen stage, as we go into the working world, and then we come home to be the mother and the wife, we have to shape shift all the time. That's one of our superpowers. And, um, and so we need to embrace, embrace that. So as mermaids, um, the patriarchal, well, first of all, let me back up. So about 2,500 years ago, when the uh, monotheistic patriarchal religious st religion started to arise and started to look at, become fearful of women's power, of women's sexuality, of their, uh, all their mystical qualities. Um, the mermaid started to become, uh, unfortunately, a, a demon, become demonized and a symbol of, of uh, carnal temptation. So, and then since that point, women have been conditioned to, to fear their own powers, to fear their bodies and to their own feminine qualities. So now is the time, and we are starting to all come together during this time to embrace these qualities of ourselves as divine beings. So this is the day that we recognize our powers as mermaids and to take on the idea that we are divine beings in on the earthly realm that we must accept our watery nature and love it and go with it 
and that we are to respect our sexuality, that we are sexual and to be okay with it and to, but, and to demand respect and to honor your natural beauty, no matter what it looks like, no matter what society says, you're absolutely stunningly perfect the way you are. Please acknowledge and honor that. And to com command your sovereignty, take charge of your life. If you are in a partnership, be sure it's equal. Stand your ground and own yourself and your gifts. And finally, emanate love in the world because we are a powerful force. The world needs feminine love more than ever right now. And so this is the time for us to embrace ourselves in love as love and to be love and radiate it around the planet. This is going to be just a quick little jaunt through history, just to, to highlight some of the mermaids that I have come upon in my exploration of, of mermaids. And mermaids have been a topic, a subject of fascination by artists for many, many eons, for many thousands of years. So some of the earliest depictions of fish can be found in 9500 BC, BCE. And so this is a fish figurine found in Serbia that may uh, represent the first mermaid who um, represents the goddess of death and re regeneration. She also may uh, be an emblem of the vulva or the phallus. One of the first divine beings to be worshiped in the half human half fish form is Oanes. He's a Babylonian god. He was worshipped thousands of years uh, BCE, but um, was first documented in writing at 290 BCE. Atargoddess, Atargoddess is the a true goddess of fertility, protection, and well-being, worshipped in northern Syria in the 8th century to the 6th century BCE. She was the goddess of creation and fertility. Then we have Amphitrite. She was the queen of the sea and the wife of Poseidon, and she was uh, Nerid. Now, the interesting thing about Amphitrite is that even though she was married to Poseidon, she was written about by herself. Uh, she was more powerful than Poseidon, the god. Mulasin is a female spirit of fresh water, a holy well, or a river, and she was a subject of German and French folklore in the 13 and uh, to 1500s. She was a shapeshifter who flew away from her husband when he broke a promise. She represents fertility, who brings economic growth. We have the sirens, the, the dangerous sea creatures who lure uh, nearby sailors with their music. The sirens are also depicted as birds. A Lorelei is a siren of the German folklore, and she's and a Lorelei is also considered a Nixie, and a Nixie is a humanoid, a humanoid, often shape shifting, water spirit who loves music, song, and dancing. So, as you can begin to see, there are many different forms of mermaids. We got sirens, Nixies, uh, and other uh, Nereids as well. So, this is an uh, Udine. She is an elemental spirit associated with water. She was worshiped in Germany. She was an emanation of nature, uh, resembling a human being in shape and imperceptible by humans. Rusalka, she was a goddess, I mean, a, a mermaid of Slavic folklore associated with uh, fertility and universal beauty. She was a life giver of the fields and the crops. Yamaya, known as the mother of the sea and the creator um, mother of the Yoruban religion of Africa. She's associated with ocean, rain, fertility, and then the, all of the female mysteries such as menstruation, conception, pregnancy, childbirth, and menopause. Mama Wati, now she's an, uh, another aspect of um, mother of the ocean in Africa, but she's associated with sex, lust, and fidelity. So she seduced her male devotees, um, then demanded faithfulness and secrecy. Acceptance meant wealth and fortune. Rejectant spelled the ruins of the family, finances, and the job. 
Here we have La Siren. She's the Haitian queen of the ocean. And she is a voodoo deity. Um, and the voodoo religion believes in many different spirits of daily life. And she was merely a spirit of daily life. This is an Aztec goddess who symbolized purity and the preciousness of spring, river, and uh, lake water that irrigated the fields. So she was a fertility goddess. Suvan Mak is a Thai, uh, Thai mermaid princess, and she is a good luck charm. And even to this day, there are pictures of her hanging outside of shops and houses to bring good fortune. Here's an interesting uh, mermaid figure. This is Nuwa. She's pictured here with her brother and her husband, Fuxi. Together, they created humanity. And there's a myth behind the, the coming together of them as uh, incestuous partners. But they are, as I mentioned, they created humanity together. And this is a plaque that was found in India. Uh, it dates back to 200 BCE. There were several plaques with mermaids that were found at this um, archaeological site. Mermaids do not appear in any Hindu texts. So someone wonders, perhaps a mermaid actually did appear. And by the way, there are uh, sightings recorded of mermaids, but we won't go into that in this lecture, in this uh, talk. So Laban is a mermaid who became a, a saint. And then we have the church who actually put mermaids on the buildings to warn against feminine temptation. Some of the mermaids uh, had double tails that symbolized fertility, also to avert evil. And then some uh, mermaids were considered the uh, forewarning against uh, sin and damnation. And Starbucks actually adopted this mermaid, double tail mermaid emblem in their uh, logo. And you can see the evolution of this uh, logo. And that's it. So oh. now you may enjoy your own mermaidness and uh, live free as a feminine uh, flowy form and just emanate love everywhere. <laughs>